but the case um, is, uh, not, is still uh, pending, it's communicated, but there is no decision of the court. And I will start from the uh, situation in Armenia, which is um, and which was in 2014, and uh, which is continuing. Most of well, the situation is the same. So there is a lack of legislation on hate speech, including calls for violence against LGBT people. We had several amendments recently, but in uh, 2014, when the case was uh, initiated, there was no any regulation regarding this. Uh, lack of legislation on discrimination, the same as now. Uh, systemic discrimination, usually sponsored by state representatives, even in their public speech. It was more actual uh, uh, during the previous government, before 2018. And also, uh, do, um, homosexuality was decriminalized in Armenia uh, uh, recently, in 2003. Uh, and uh, hostility and negative attitudes towards homosexuality still prevail. And according to the study uh, of attitudes towards LGBT people in Armenia conducted by Pink Armenia in 2016, 90% of Armenia's population is homo and transphobic, agreeing that LGBT persons' rights should be limited to legal means. So this is the overall background in which the case was initiated. You have the link of the case here if you are interested, or I can share it with you, the case um, in the ECHR. So on May uh, 16, 2014, a press conference took place uh, on Facebook where the Armenian jury members of uh, 2014 Eurovision Song Contest said during the interview that they had awarded the lowest points to the Conchita Wurst, which is an uh, Austrian drag queen a singer, uh, and you see the uh, photo here, because of their internal revulsion, adding that just like mentally ill persons cause aversion, so do such uh, phenomena. Uh, applicants, which were mostly uh, activists uh, of um, human rights activists working in the field of uh, women's rights, LGBT rights, uh, bloggers uh, or um, uh, journalists, uh, they pointed out during this Facebook press conference um, that uh, the comments of the jury were discriminatory, hateful, intolerant, unconstitutional, inhumane, and uh, offensive to sexual minorities and to persons with mental disabilities. And in uh, May 17, 2014, the article, uh, which was uh, called They Serve the Interests of International Gay Lobby, the Blacklist of Enemies of the Nation and the State, was published in one of the uh, newspapers. Uh, Editor-in-chief of this newspaper was also a member of parliament and member of governing party. And uh, the uh, article contained um, the, the, uh, this kind of um, expressions that there is only one way to stop the advance of the lobbyists, zero tolerance. Every lobbyist is an enemy, internal enemy of the nation and the state. And uh, it was describing the situation with the Eurovision contest and the, the Facebook press conference. And uh, by the end, uh, the author uh, of the article was calling for um, ordinary people to stop to contact with these lobbyists, for public officials uh, to you know, refuse them public uh, service jobs, for the employers uh, not to hire them, uh, for the owners of media companies uh, to give and to not give them uh, opportunity to, to influence public opinion, uh, the heads of educational institutions uh, not to give them possibilities uh, to educate a younger generation and so on. And uh, by the end of the article, uh, there were hyperlinks of all the people uh, of the Facebook uh, pages of all the participants uh, who uh, commented um, on uh, this issue and uh, raised their um, voice against uh, the uh, intolerance uh, by the juries. Uh, and after that, uh, the applicants uh, part of these people whose uh, Facebook hyperlinks are under this uh, blacklist, so-called. Uh, the applicants requested a retraction from the newspaper, which they refused, and they published another article, and they still dare to request a retraction uh, by this uh, uh, name. And uh, the applicants uh, submitted defamation civil case. As um, I mentioned, uh, we don't have um, in Armenia uh, hate speech uh, legislation. And this was the only 
responsibility to raise uh, the violation of the rights uh, before the court. But we also argued that uh, the, uh, the per uh, that per permissible limit limits of free speech under Article 10 of the Convention have been overstepped and mentioned about incitement to hate and discrimination. Uh, during this uh, period of uh, proceedings, uh, a newspaper published series of other articles that were uh, targeting uh, specific uh, applicants and their family members with a lot of hate speech and uh, discriminatory expressions. And in uh, during this period of time, also this newspaper uh, was awarded a medal and honors uh, from the president of Armenia, from the president of National Assembly on the occasion of newspaper's 25th anniversary. And uh, the court dismissed uh, the applicant's claim, relying on Article 10 of the Convention. The court mentioned that the article did not aim to insult the applicants, but simply contained an element of journalistic exaggeration and provocation. And the uh, court also mentioned that uh, they, uh, uh, the applicants joined the public discussion. They should have known more tolerance. Uh, uh, shown more tolerance towards the critical statements which were part of an open debate and concerned the instilling of hom homosexual uh, and similar ideas in society and not deviating from Christian path rather than constituting personal insults. Uh, the Civil uh, Court of Appeal um, uh, dismissed uh, the applicant's appeal and uh, also the Court of Cassation uh, uh, found it inadmissible. And uh, we, um, the applicants, which were represented by uh, me and other lawyers, uh, we um, submitted the case to the European Court of Human Rights in November 2015. And we mentioned, uh, we claimed that there were violations of Article 3, 6, 1, 8, 8 14, and 17. Uh, and uh, the case was uh, communicated uh, by the court in February 2018 under Articles 8, 17, and um, 14. Uh, during this period of time, there were three uh, third party interventions from ILGA Europe, uh, from Article 19, and uh, from Ghent University. Uh, now I, uh, uh, I will uh, present uh, our like on, uh, on which case uh, why we applied at the European Court and which were uh, our most of our like arguments and uh, cases that we used. Uh, we will concentrate more um, now uh, on articles 14 and 17 as the, these are uh, the discussion topics. So one of the main um, cases that we um, applied uh, to now was uh, Vedeland and others were Sweden. Uh, in this uh, case, the court uh, held that discrimination based on sexual orientation is as serious as discrimination based on race, origin or color, because sexual orientation is a characteristic that is fundamental to a person's sense of self. It is moreover used as a marker of group identity. Uh, we also uh, used the Dentopa case uh, about which George uh, described and presented very uh, in, in details. Uh, and um, uh, this was more about positive obligations uh, of the state to protect individuals from discrimination by private actors. Uh, and uh, the situation is the same here because uh, uh, the violation of the rights, uh, uh, as we claim, they are from the individual, from the newspaper, but not from the state body. But as in the top case, it is mentioned by the court, uh, the, the uh, state has uh, uh, also positive obligation to protect uh, individuals uh, for private uh, party uh, interventions. And um, uh, we also used uh, that um, uh, the uh, uh, case uh, where regarding uh, the Article 10 of the Convention that it uh, does not uh, protect uh, hate speech. Uh, concrete expressions constituting hate speech, which may be insulting to particular individuals or groups, are not protected by, by Article 10 of the Convention. And uh, so we um, uh, to the court that the lack of civil, administrative, or criminal sanctions for discrimination and hate speech meant that the only remedy 
available to the applicant was the inadequate and inappropriate complaint of civil defamation in which their claim of discrimination was held uh, to be out of scope of the subject of the lawsuit uh, by the court. Uh, we also uh, you, uh, claimed uh, for the violation of Article 17, uh, which is uh, rarely used um, for its material scope. Usually, court uses this uh, to uh, reject um, uh, in, the, uh, in cases uh, when uh, the state is uh, violating, um, when there is a, a case about Article 10. Uh, but in this case, uh, we claim that um, uh, first, like Article 17, it prohibits the destruction uh, of uh, and excessive limitation on the rights and freedoms set out in the Convention. And it applies to states uh, as well as to the groups and individuals. Its purpose is to safeguard the rights protected by the Convention by ruling out reliance on the rights to conduct uh, activities intended to destroy the rights and to weaken or to destroy the values of democratic society. And uh, in its uh, third party inter intervention, uh, Article 19, uh, which is an organization which is working with uh, mostly on the field of freedom of speech, uh, it has also observed that the context is particularly important in the present case because of the societal attitude and lack of effective legal measures. It uh, reinstated that media tends to contribute to, to negative stereotyping of LGBTI individuals. That journalists have described being gay as a choice of lifestyle and generally LGBTI people are portrayed in a negative context uh, with a pejorative and negative language. Uh, the, uh, and we claim that uh, the atmosphere of impunity and acceptance of intolerance towards LGBT people in Armenia, in the light of which national courts also have justified the actions of the newspaper, and through judicial acts applying specifically to the Article 10 of the Convention. It's abused by the uh, application. It's abused the application of the, of the right to freedom of expression, contrary to the aim of the right uh, granted and contrary to the fundamental values of uh, tolerance, uh, social peace and uh, non-discrimination. Uh, so, uh, we claimed uh, that uh, Article 17, uh, destruction of the rights, uh, was done by the state by uh, uh, applying Article 10 to destruct uh, the fundamental rights of uh, activists and LGBT people in Armenia. And the court also raised several questions uh, during the communication process. Uh, has there been a violation of applicants? rights under Article 10, uh, under Article 8, uh, has the, has, have the applicants suffered discrimination contrary to Article 14? And regarding Article 17, court asked uh, where the act of the emission of the state in the present case aimed at the destruction or limitation of any of the rights and freedoms set forth in the Convention to a greater extent than is provided for the Convention within the meaning of Article 17. Uh, so, uh, in the present case, uh, we'll see how the court will decide and uh, what will be the decision of the court. Uh, but uh, this was uh, the most effective way, way uh, to, um, uh, to raise the issue, because in the absence of the uh, legislation uh, on hate speech, on discrimination, uh, uh, and uh, in the case when uh, our courts uh, don't um, don't have the understanding of the hate speech and think that uh, this is uh, out of the scope of the regulation um, of our legislation. Uh, this was the only possible way, and uh, we hope that uh, the decision of the court will somehow uh, affect uh, also uh, the. Um, adoption of the effective legislation on um, hate speech and discrimination. Uh, particularly now in Armenia, there are a lot of like discussions, uh, and the government, the new government, uh, is ready to adopt uh, uh, the uh, anti-discrimination and hate speech legislation. But we want it to be as effective as possible, and also it's very important that uh, LGBT uh, people. Uh, 
uh, won't be uh, let outside of the regulation of this uh, of these regulations because um, in the draft that we have about uh, the anti net anti discrimination uh, law uh, draft um, uh, sexual orientation and gender identity are left out of the regulation uh, and uh, also um, hate speech uh, legislation the one that we have in the criminal code, uh, it does not explicitly uh, have uh, sexual orientation and gender identity as uh, grounds. Uh, so we think that uh, this case may be um, uh, um, a possibility uh, and maybe a landmark case uh, to uh, not only uh, for Armenia uh, regarding the head speech to have like more effective ethnic legislation, but also it may be um, because uh, Article 17 is very rarely used and uh, maybe the court will have uh, a new uh, saying uh, regarding this.